A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. The term breadwinner is still skewed towards men in family households. Can we change this to reflect the gender diversity of wage earners in the home? Our speaker today is Jennifer Barrett, who's written extensively about personal finance for Forbes. Jennifer breaks down this idea of the breadwinner and shares why women should embrace this label to attain wider financial independence. Six years ago, the Pew Research Center released a report with a surprising statistic. They discovered that for the first time, women were the sole or primary breadwinners in 40% of households with kids under 18. 40%. When I first heard this, I thought, wow, we are really making progress. I assumed that this paradigm shift in the breadwinner model had to be the result of women becoming more financially independent, that the gender wage gap must be closing. Then I took a closer look. It turns out that nearly two-thirds of those breadwinners were single moms, and their median income was $23,000 a year. Now, the rest were wives who out-earned their husbands, but it seemed like that was more the result of the recession than of any major progress we'd made on the gender wage gap front. It had hardly budged. Men lost more than 5.4 million jobs in the wake of the Great Recession, more than double the number that women did. Some of those jobs disappeared. Others were replaced with lower-paying ones. And so millions of wives suddenly found themselves carrying the financial burden. It seemed like a lot of the women who were in these breadwinner roles had never planned to be there at all. And in fact, when I started talking to some of them, they all told me, different variations of this. I never expected to be financially responsible for a family. I didn't plan for this. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I knew how they felt. When I started my working life with a degree in journalism from Syracuse and grand ambitions for my career, but I had no real understanding or expectation of being able to provide for myself financially for the long term, much less provide for anyone else. Why would I? I thought it wasn't supposed to be like that. So fast forward 10 years, and I'm renting a small one-bedroom apartment in Brooklyn with my husband and toddler. By this point, I thought we'd have a place of our own and one that was big enough to accommodate the second child that we both wanted. Instead, We were sharing our only bedroom, which also served as a home office, with our 18-month-old son, Zachary. One night, Zachary woke up wailing, and I jumped up out of the bed. I picked him up out of the crib, and I was rocking him and pacing back and forth in our bedroom when it suddenly hit me. If something didn't change, we would soon be sharing this bedroom with a preschooler. And then what? A grade schooler? It wasn't supposed to be like this. I had a successful career as a journalist with decent benefits and a steady paycheck. I was covering nearly half the bills. I had a small 401k. I even had my own emergency savings account with a couple hundred dollars in it. I thought I was doing okay, and because I did. Like a lot of women, I hadn't started seriously saving or investing for my future. I'd let my credit card debt creep up into the thousands. I was still paying it off and I'd never bothered to negotiate my salary. Something I would deeply regret a few months later, when I found out that someone had been hired in a role similar to mine, and they were making nearly 50% more than me. And I'd been at this magazine for more than six years, so you can imagine the money I missed out on. The craziest part was that I was actually covering personal finance for the magazine at the time, so if anyone should have known better, it was me. But what I realized that night was that every choice I'd made with my money was based on three assumptions. That I'd get married, that my husband would earn more than me, and that he'd take care of most of this stuff, just as my dad had. 
So even though I was earning almost as much as my husband was at this point, I'd been clinging to this belief that he would be the one to get the raise or the better paying job so we could afford a place of our own and a second child. Now, obviously, that hadn't happened yet. But rather than ask what more I could do, I realized I was starting to resent my husband for it. And as I started talking to other women, my coworkers, my friends, whether they were in their 20s, 30s, 40s, or beyond, it became clear that I wasn't alone in my assumptions. Even though women have a higher chance of being the breadwinner now than ever before, most of us still aren't being brought up to think like one or to make the kinds of choices that will set us up to be truly independent. That it's not because women aren't capable of earning more, managing their money, and investing it wisely. It's because we still aren't expected to. And you can see the results of that all around. Now, that's partly because we still earn, on average, about 20% less than men do. Men's retirement account balances are, on average, 50% higher than women's. Yet women live five to six years longer than men. So we're living longer, but we're saving and investing less. That's some scary math. And it's one reason why women who are 65 or older are 80% more likely than men to live in poverty. Yes, we still have no formal financial education in this country, so all of us could be better prepared financially. Even the advice we get as adults is often different. The research firm AgeWave analyzed the money coverage in the April 2018 issue of the top women's magazines. Out of nearly 1,600 editorial pages, guess how many pages covered personal finance advice? Five. Five pages out of 1,600. A recent survey found two-thirds of women between the ages of 18 and 29 thought financial planning was, and I quote, too difficult to even think about. I'll admit, I used to feel that way. But that night, pacing back and forth in our bedroom with our son in my arms, I realized just being quietly resentful of my husband probably wasn't going to get me any closer to the future that I wanted. And that future, a home of our own in the city we loved, another baby, it felt like it was starting to slip away. Now, I hadn't been raised to think like a breadwinner, but it didn't mean I couldn't start now. And here's what I began to understand. It's not enough to just cover the bills and pay down debt. It's more than that. The breadwinner mentality isn't, how am I going to have enough money to cover the repairs to the broken dishwasher? It's, how am I going to have enough money to cover the next 10, 20, 30 years? It's not about bills. It's about building wealth. It's not about stretching every paycheck. It's about taking some of every single paycheck and putting it to work for you by saving and investing it for your future. It's about knowing that you can take care of yourself now and in the future, not expecting anyone else to take care of you. Jennifer Barrett is the Chief Education Officer at Acorns, a company that specializes in micro and robo-investing. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Syracuse, New York. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Syracuse University. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.